Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, I'd like to talk today about A Course in Miracles. This show is 20 years old, and there was quite a period of time when it was called A Course in Miracles, where, because I was struggling with the lessons and getting through it in a form that many people would like to throw out the window, I chose to sort of memorize it, which I can do. So I took the text, all of those chapters, and I took a, ch a chapter at a time, and I worked it and worked it and worked it and had a wonderful time sharing it. This time, I want to try and explain the principles of of A Course in Miracles, and I'd like to thank Dr. Kenneth Wapnick, who is a psychotherapist, because I am doing sort of a little book report on his introduction to A Course in Miracles, and I really thank him, because it's just helped me to be a lot clearer on some of the difficulties and why it has spread so. We are now in 22, 23 languages all over the world. There are support groups, study groups. It's, it's really a system of thought, and it's, it's huge and it's exciting. So I will try to start with Helen and Bill, right from the very beginning, how it was scribed. Helen Schuckman and Bill Thetford were psychologists at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York City. And in the 60s, it was really interesting how open um, they were about what uh, dissension was going on in universities at that time. There was bickering, there was one-upping, there was competition, there was criticism, there was backbiting. And I guess it turned out to be kind of not fun for people, but we needed somebody to step up the plate and sort of figure out how we could change that. So they were heading over to Cornell to another medical center, and it was apparently not typical of Bill to say to Helen, look, I know what this is going to look like, so can we put our heads together? Is there a way we can find a method for having more peace when we had these meetings, something to lean back on. And I guess out of character for Helen, she said, I think I will join you. And that is key to one of the biggest principles of A Course in Miracles, is two people joining together with a cause. So um, they went to that meeting, and they talked and talked. And Helen, being, well, she was Jewish, and she was very into analyzing. She was a very fine psychologist, and she was scientific. So the word God and Jesus were not her favorites. So it was interesting that she even decided that she try to help. But it took Bill being by her side the whole time. There was a cute part that Ken said when she was scribing it from Jesus, he had to hold her up as she was taking the dictation because she did shorthand. She was perfect for the job. But she had some psychic ability that she always ignored as a child because she wasn't raised to be a psychic or to, to look into things like that. She was a scientist and raised in a family where she was going to make it in the world of academia. So she began to realize that some of those experiences she had, which kind of scared her, but she just sort of tossed them aside, might be useful right now. And the scriber of the Course, which Jesus does give him, her his name, um, well, he does it in a way that is a psychological and a spiritual treatise wrapped into one. So she could handle it on the psychological end, and it wouldn't frighten her too much from the spiritual end. So, she started to have waking dreams and sleeping dreams. And um, as I say, Bill was right there by her side because she kept calling him about things that were happening to her, like the Torah would appear or the scroll would disappear. And I remember one of the touching moments was in the middle. And Jesus, by the way, this man, whom she finally really did realize was Jesus, kept showing up. In the middle, it said, God is. On the left, it said, would you like to look at the past? And on the right, it said, would you like to look at the future? And the voice said to her, what do you like? And she said, I like God is. I like what's in the middle. And there was a cute comment from Jesus. Well, you passed the test. You're our gal. So on that note, she uh, proceeded to have more waking dreams, sleeping dreams. And it took seven years of all of a sudden the voice saying, this is A Course in Miracles. Please take notes. Well, at that point, that really threw poor Helen over the top. So she called Bill and he said, look, why don't you just do what it says? And so she did, uh, reluctantly. 
So she, with her little steno pad, was able to take it very fast. And what was interesting was the phone could ring, and she could leave what she was taking in, take on the phone, and some, something would nudge her right back, and she would pick up right where she left off. So the entire 622 pages was delivered to Helen. Now, the text was the hardest part, because in the beginning, begrudgingly, she was having a struggle with the religious terms. And I think what Ken Wapnick is trying to help us with was the world it is 75% Western-oriented Christian. At least the church, look at our holidays, Christmas, Easter, our calendars. We live in a Christian Western world. So I think the scribing of the course had everything to do with something everyone could handle. The psychology was there, the spirituality was there, and it wasn't a religion, it wasn't asking for a leader, it wasn't asking for a church, it wasn't asking for money. It was simply offering a way of thought for this planet which is in dire need. And I really want to get this point across about this planet. Uh, we're supposed to be in a celestial speed up, which I believe is truly happening. But with the media, with cell phones, with, with everything that is exposed on the internet, we are overly privy to things we may not want to hear. I personally am finding the more I hear, the more I have to turn it off or back away from it. And it is, the, Jesus is saying this world is really not doing well. And he is apologizing to us with A Course in Miracles, saying, please forgive me because I did what I could. But the old church, which loves vengeance and competition and politics, took his gifts and turned it into more of a business, more vengeance is, thou, is yours, saith the Lord, all this stuff that made him into something that he definitely was not. If there was ever an innocent man, if there was ever a man that could look at the worst hate in the world and see past it, it was Jesus. He had his connection with his father, the one mind, the creator of all. Uh, the Course in Miracles makes it very clear on the identi identity problem. Um, there's definitely one creator, one head honcho. There was the one son that came here. And his story, Jesus' his story, is remarkable, which I don't want to touch on yet because I want to get those principles. So I want to lay out this field, if I can, to make some sense here. We talk about the one mind, and these, these are terms in A Course in Miracles that I want you to understand. One mind is a, a, a name for knowledge. That is called, that's heaven. In the Course in Miracles, knowledge says heaven. Um, it's where we were all happy in heaven and having a great time. That's one mind, this is our beginning. So there we all are, having a great time, having a ball, everybody's happy, and then we have to get into the Bible and in Genesis and look at the story of Adam and Eve. So we all know that how that tale went, where they were having a great time too, but they had a little separation problem where they decided to look at each other in a different way, uh, and they felt shame and they covered themselves up. And they are, there's this so-called original sin was not an original sin. It was a separation with the mind because they had a will. And they decided that they would just um, take off and explore. Well, obviously, the Holy Spirit, um, God, it, it did not punish them. There was no punishment for Adam and Eve for anybody. There was no sin. There was no guilt. There was nothing like that going on. But what did happen is the world became terrifying. That as it spread, uh, that the innocence of Jesus got lost, we turned into a world of a lot of competition. A lot of degrees, a lot of intellectual stuff, a lot of man's inhumanity to man. If I hear one more story about drug companies selling to, or giving gifts to doctors to give poison pills to all of us, I mean, there's such corruption here. I mean, it's, it's so over the top, I don't even know how to explain how bad it is. I don't, I'm sure you all know. There is just a lot of deceit, deception, corruption. It's, it's the ego plane. It's the world we live in, it's what it is. And, you know, uh, the ego plane, we'll, we'll, we'll take that term. The first principle, we're talking about one-mindedness, knowledge, heaven, joy, love, only love, perfection, we're all there. We go to the ego mind, which the Course in Miracles addresses, 
where we see fear and hate, we see special relationships, we see causes causing effects and effects bringing about causes. We see this spiral going on where our minds have gone totally bonkers trying to screw everything up to keep the ego happy. The ego wants to be happy, and if you go to the ego saying, I'm really upset about something, the ego will very willingly say, I got just the thing for you. And guess what it is? It's the wrong answer. It's what makes things worse. So, so that's the ego mind. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more, if I can break that down, about the fear. Anything that isn't love is based, the undercurrent is fear. The cause and effect, um, Ken Wapnick will talk about, if you have a cause, then it has to have an effect. So that's on the Earth plane where that's the way we think. If this starts over here, if we defend uh, nuclear arms and we'll go over here, then we're going to defend back because we're terrified. You know, we got to defend ourselves. Well, the Course in Miracles says we're defenseless. The more you do that, the worse it gets and the more you're supporting the ego. So the spiral is just digging a rather disastrous hole. So when you get to the ego, um, we get to special relationships. Now, this is my favorite. Special relationships, which I've had numerous, and we've all had them, are when we feel empty inside, we're very aware of our humanness and the struggle that it is to survive here. We draw it to us by no accident. They're sent to us, but we're just wide open receivers for folks coming into our lives that make us feel really good. Holy full, we're in love, everything is just perfect, we're back in heaven. Now we all know how those don't hold up. It's kind of like an ego trick where you attract something that is wonderful on the honeymoon, as they say, honeymoons wear off, and then all of a sudden you find there's a real person in front of you with flaws, who the person you thought you met that made you feel so good maybe has another friend and it was too competitive for you and you didn't like it so then you got a little feisty and said now look you've changed so if you change and if you do that then I'm not going to do this for you so we do this funny little dance maybe I'm the I don't think I'm the only one but you do the dance I always used to say it's my mother in disguise but whatever it is it's a dynamic that needs to be looked at so the universe is wonderful they set up every condition that we need they just send it right in specialized just for Penelope Chatterton there it is custom made so I get what I need and I've been widowed too and I've suffered a lot of trauma and tragedy and an illness and I've, I've worked out a lot of stuff and they were all no accident they all gave me everything I needed so with everything I needed in mind um, those special relationships they were like the final hook from the ego they send them to you saying, hey, this is your heaven, now you're home. Well, as they fall short, I always say the next one shows up only in a different disguise, but it's often, well, always the same dynamic, only if you did a little work, it's kind of trimmed a little bit, so it's a little more mellow. And you go through them until you finally realize that you do not need them, because as you suffer the abandonment and the separation, which symbolizes the initial separation that you feel from God, because if you're lonely, feel empty, it's all about your not connecting. So these wonderful gifts are from the ego slap us on the face and say, aha, and you suffer and you mourn and you go through, frankly, a terror that sometimes we don't think we're going to even live through. And I know that one well. It's the greatest gift in the world. Hopefully you get it in spurts because I think if you didn't get it in spurts, you really couldn't be here because it would just be too ghastly. I know that. I know that because I'm I know, the, I know the, the trail. But as you learn through your mourning and your anguish and your loss, you always go in because that's just where you go. I mean, it's the last stop, but it's the best stop when you finally get there and then you all of a sudden go through this pain and find the light at the end of the tunnel. You find inner peace, you find a support system, you find a message, you feel the everlasting arms, and you, you, you gotta get used to that because that's just could be new material. But you know, every one of us is gonna get a particular plan to bring us to this place, whether you like the course or not. Ken Wapnick is cute saying, most people would like to throw it out the window because none of it makes any sense, in a sense, Every 365 lessons in the middle says the same thing, only they give it to you with a different angle to it. 
So on the Earth plane, we do a linear learning. We start here, we open a book, we're going to learn how to do physics. We end up over here, and there's the answer. That's linear. We go from here to here. The Course in Miracles is circular. It, it's like it takes you deeper and deeper. And every time you do a lesson, every time you do that work, every time you just obey what the lesson says you are to do, you get deeper and deeper, and it begins to gel. Now, here's the punchline you must all understand. When you close that book, the Holy Spirit says, this is a beginning. Now you've got your guides. Don't forget, you're just beginning. Don't think if you've done the Course in Miracles for one year, you're home free. It doesn't work. So as you go deeper and deeper with the same material that goes round and round, taking you back to your source, taking you back to the voice, taking you back to the internal teacher, which is the whole point of A Course in Miracles. They want you to find it. Bernie Siegel calls him George. I don't care what you call him. Jesus says, I don't have to be your Savior, your Lord and Savior. I'm not, I don't care about that. Somebody will come along and open this door for you because I'm going to see to it. If you want my help, I'm here. Uh, it, it, his story touches me deeply, the, just the way he scribed it to Helen, uh, and how tender he was with her, and understanding, and finding this perfect mix to try and explain what didn't work last time around. Last time around, he forgave his enemies for his death. They bickered, they tortured, they teased, they were brutal, they killed him. In his innocence, he did not see vengeance, he saw forgiveness. Now that gift, forgive thine enemies, I mean, it is, we all know that that's what he came to do. But unfortunately, there are other things in the Bible from the old, old church that talk about the negative. I, I think there are 800 parts in A Course in Miracles that will change scripture so that you see it the way it was intended. Very few disciples heard Jesus. They, it's, it's, a tough, it's, a, it's a tough thing to understand to be, and he came in his ego. He, Jesus was a man he, in his ego, battling with all of us here, trying to make his mark. And he was so uniquely different. They tried to give him fancy robes. They tried to turn him into a priest. They tried to do all the things that he didn't want to be. And that was not his message. And his, his death on the cross was the last useless journey. It's the journey where we now know we're immortal. There's no death. Now, nothing can shoot an ego down faster than there is no death. Because under death comes cause and effect, special relationships, terror, fear, all of that. The, the bottom line is, do you get it? There is no death. He came back, he might have touched them with spirit, he might have been seen, there are so many renditions of it, but really universally folks tend to think there was a resurrection, there was a rebirth, and he did that. That's done. We now know we're, we're in for the long haul. We're eternal, we had no beginning, we have no end. Heaven is here now. However, with this celestial speed up, he is talking of a long period of time because the sonship is huge. All of us have work to do, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. What are we all doing? When Helen and Bill joined, that's the point of the course. Two people came together with an intention for good, to make something better. We all can't go to heaven anymore all by ourselves. I think that's really, I have uh, Amit Goswami who does quantum activism, it's so cute. You could do it years ago, but you can't do that anymore. You gotta take everybody with you. You can't go now. Take somebody with you, then you can go. So it means the joining, the uniting, the sharing, the teaching, whatever means of sharing love that you have, that your genes came in, no matter what you look like, whatever your talents are, whether you can write, whether you can't write, whether it looks like you have no talent, guess what? There is something. Your trauma, your separation dilemma can be used by the Christ mind. Let's go to the Christ mind. The Christ mind, the gift. When Jesus died, he just didn't leave us alone. We use in The Course in Miracles the Christ mind because he put it in all of us. Right from the get-go with Adam and Eve, that gift came in. They could see all the shame they wanted. It wasn't seen by God, the Creator, the universal love. He, did, he didn't deal with any of that sin stuff. 
he put the love in there, he put the Christ mind, and the Christ mind is, you can call it Jesus speaking to us again, you can name it what you will. We have an internal teacher. So we have eternal life, we have an internal teacher, and we have work to do. So, as a dancer, singer, um, I'd like to think I was funny once in a while. I have found that Awaken the Dream, 20 years ago, sort of, I, I, I unveiled a lot of stuff into loving, through my traumas, studying. I've been, I had a Christian science father, Christian science practitioner, grandparents way back in the 1800s, which tells you how old I am. I mean, we were surrounded by, by religious war as kids. And um, I took the baton from dad as a Christian scientist. And then, of course, I just done, did nothing but explore in my own loss, in my own fear, in my own emptiness, and my own separation. There was hardly anything with my energy I did not go through. As a matter of fact, the course came out around 75. And I had one of the first copies, three books in one. I just had it. I was working with a mentor at the time. And we gobbled that up, and we're blown away. Uh, and that was a long time ago. So. I'm still slugging it out, but I've got something that I will never be able to lose because I found my internal teacher. I talk to my internal teacher. I am constantly in touch about everything, and I'm shifting things. In all of those lessons, we're learning to take what we think we see and take responsibility for it being all about us. In those special relationships where you're picking on somebody and you don't like the characteristics of somebody, guess where that comes from? It's all about you. It has nothing to do with them. It's all, so those are opportunities for you to take a look at where your healing needs to go. Um, Helen and Bill, we can't thank enough, and Ken, and Judith Scutch, she's the one that came in on the scene and literally just took it and, because Helen and Bill knew nothing about how to get it out and publish it and everything else, and Ken Wapnick helped, helped Helen put those chapters together, and the, the work, the um, manual for teachers at the end, of those are, that's a, like a vocabulary book where it explains what the Christ mind is, what Jesus means, what one-mindedness is, what the ego means, that helps. It's kind of easy to get through that. It gives you something that when you go back to the text, you've got that um, vocabulary so that you don't wonder, gee, what, that sounds weird. It's hard enough to take that on. It is not, folks, a religion. It is not a psychology. He, Kenneth Wapnick gives Freud, my birthday mate, a lot of credit for his use of denial and projection. Now he was not, he was terrified of his own spirituality, so people tend to only look at Jung, who was Jung, who was a little non-traditional, but Kenneth wants us to remember that learning about the subconscious, the id, the conscious, the subconscious, looking at all those aspects of ourselves were really critical for A Course in Miracles to even be understood. We'd have to know what projection meant. And so Freud, good for you. And Jung, good for you too. So. So there we have the psychology, and now we have a system of thought. It, it, I, it's hard to even, it's like a movement. It's a way, it's a universal understanding. It's a universal language, and it's, and it's, it's an experience. I got the word, it's an experience. So the Course in Miracles takes us to what, they can't even say in the text. They can't find words for what an experience is. All they know is that when you go through those lessons and you keep shifting, you have an experience. There's going from terror to relief. And you feel that. It, it's something that, it's wonderful that it's experiential. The whole thing is getting you on the soul trip where you keep transforming, you, tr you keep rebirthing the earth plane. It just, it doesn't end. But getting back to what are you here for? Well, I didn't know I was here for Awake in the Dream, and I didn't know how much more teaching I wanted to do. This past buck full moon certainly hit me over the head with doing more work. I'm going to be doing more teaching of the course, uh, facilitating more groups. This, this will go on forever. But I realized that for me to handle even more that I'm seeing that I don't want to see that's so hard on my heart, about the earth plane and our cruelty to one another. I need to get out of my own way more by teaching. So I'm here today to recommend that you find a way to. If you feel the way I do, that you want more strength, more inner peace, you want to get, you want to serve. You all know as you give, you receive. Uh, and as you serve another one, two and three, getting on Noah's Ark, two and three gathered together. We need to get together. 
And any way you do it, you don't have to use Jesus, you don't have to do anything that if religion bothers you or Christianity you know, turned against you, maybe with your, with your race or faith, it didn't serve you well, so you don't want to use it. You don't have to. But let me tell you this, you're not going to get very far. Whether you go for a Course in Miracles, think of all the inspired writers of the Course of, oh, sensitivity groups, groups coming up to, to transform, um, psychological trainings, Gary Renard, um, Mary Ann Williamson, John Mundy, Wayne Dyer, a lot of folks, uh, Deepak Chopra, they all quote the Course. Th that movement of the now 23 languages has just spread worldwide while, while people are stepping up with their particular gene and talent, being inspired maybe by the Course, finding their own unique way to share. So my friends, you've got one. Everybody has a way to share. It does not have to be uh, being an orator, a writer. It, it can be serving in the, the soup kitchen, the family pantry. Just getting together with others, serving, giving, helping the poor. I mean, I don't have to go into all the causes. Our poverty, uh, homelessness. Oh my gosh, I, some of the ads that even come on about uh, MSPCA or ASPCA, I can't, I have to turn off, it's too painful for me. There are children starving, there are people that need homes. Let's help in our last minute. So I guess I'm winding up here with our last minute about find something. We all have a talent. We all have that special gene that was, was predestined when you came in this time to hatch into something. You'll have threads of all kinds of growth that you've gone through that will appear all of a sudden the aha moments will happen a lot. A lot will make sense to you, my friends, where you'll giggle and it's like, yes, you'll get relief from sharing and from doing to others because with the misery here, um, I, it's our way out. It's our way out and it's our way up and it's our way in and it's a way back to a separation that never happened. It was our idea. We thought differently. We forgot about the fact like Jesus was only love. He was not all those awful things that they use in the Bible. Oh, he, he was innocent. And all our friends are innocent. So when you see a war story coming at you where you really think, aha, I know who that is. Remember, that's you, especially if it's negative. That person, you shift, get some peace, and know that what you're looking at is total peace, love, and joy. And everybody is whole, complete, and perfect and has the voice. Find your voice, friends. And thank you for joining me on Awaken the Dream. Talk to you again soon.